uh, going against God, going against the word, it's easy for you to spot, bro. Your spider senses go off, and you're able to spot guys. And this is what they're upset about. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over uh, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall any means hurt you. They're still waiting for this power. They think that they're going to be flying high now. They, 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 they think they're going to just be jumping from buildings. And you know what I'm saying? And zapping Edomites and, and shit like that. They don't understand that this is a spiritual battle, bro. That we got control over these serpents that are trying to lie. That brother Bond. That brother Bond. Uh, what, what you just brought out with the treading. The treading on the scorpions. Yeah. Well, you, we can go into that in uh, Revelations, what's that, 20? Yeah. We can go into that real quick because they think they're waiting on that. You see what I'm saying? They're waiting. <laughs> You're right. Look, they're waiting on everything. <laughs> but, but, hey, but is it that that's what Satan needs to do? Satan got to get you to not to believe in this time, remember? Yeah, man. Yes, bro. It's crazy. I didn't even think it was this crazy, but it is crazy. The, yeah. It really is. It's it's some stuff, man, you got to be living through it to really be like, <laughs> man, guys are really fighting against what they call the truth. Yeah. They, they, they're really against it, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Bun, uh, Bun, you, you good? Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm listening. Right, this, this one's for you, bro. This one's for you, bro. Wow. This one's for you, bro. Uh, we tagging you in here. <laughs> All right, this, is, <laughs> this is Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven... Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. Before before you go, before you go, I have to say this. I have to say this. I have to say this. Because, Sia, you know that these dudes, these dudes were saying that this was Septimius Tavarius, bro. I'm butchering that name, bro. They were saying that this angel was a man that was a slave in the Roman Empire that took Esau down in the Dark Ages, bro. Mm -hmm. Madness, complete madness. Like, again, we always tell you, brothers, these guys, their job is to carnalize the scriptures, bro. They're to make flesh of anything that's spiritual and they're to get you to wait for something that's already happened. Because, again, Satan, Satan is, is his job now is to get you not to believe, right? So, I got you. You got it, bun. You got it, bro. I, 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 I want to, I want you to get in this. Oh, no, 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 no. Yo, I'm good. Alright, so this is uh, Revelation 20 and 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Okay, so let's go to Luke 8. Alright. Let's go to Luke 8. Because all this, all these, all like Sia was saying, all this power, you know, soon as the Lord, the Lord said, All power and authority has been given unto me. The Lord gave us the same measure. Remember, he gave us the spare without measure. So whatever the Lord was doing, all the family of Christ should be able to do. So when you go to Luke 8, let's go here. This is Luke, Luke 8, chapter 8, verse 22. And start at 20, start at 28, um, start at 28, yeah. All right. This is Luke chapter 8, verse 28. And uh, when he saw... Uh, let me start at 27, bro. And when he went forth to the land, there he met out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and uh, were no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. And when so he... So now, you yep. read Revelation 20. Yep. And the Lord was binding a what? What What was he binding in verse 1? Uh, it's the serpent. The uh, serpent. The, 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 uh, yep. Having a keys. Demon, right? Yep. Having keys right. to the bottom of this pit and a great chain in now his watch, hand. Now watch this. Uh-huh. Uh, verse 29. Uh, was that 28? And when he had saw Hamashiach, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said... So what, the Lord, so what is the Lord doing? The Lord is binding him. That's what the chain represents. To bind the, the evil spirit. Uh-huh. Right? And fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Hamashiach, the son of God, most high? 
I beseech thee, torment me not. Mm -hmm. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For often, oftentimes, it had caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in feathers. Here you go. Uh, uh, heavy chain in his hand. And he broke the bands and was driven out of the devil. Uh huh. Unto the wilderness. Mm hmm. You want to speak on that? So, what we're, what we're reading, we're reading, we're reading Revelation 20, verse 1. Remember, the demon is asking Christ not to put him back into the place of torment, which, which Revelation 20, verse 1 says, the bottomless pit. That's the place of torment for demons. That's Tartarus. That's the lowest level of hell, right? So that's the place prepared for Satan and his demons, Matthew 25, 41. That's the same place Christ said the goats are going to in Matthew 25, 41, the cursed ones. So we're seeing Christ have dominion over this evil spirit, right? Go ahead. Read down to 30, uh, 32. Go ahead. You have 30, I think. And Hamashiach asked him, saying, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And, and they besought him that he would not uh, commend them to go into the deep. And there was a, a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would not suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down in the steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they were fed them, and when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and you went. See that? So, so right here, the, remember the herdsmen that were there. Remember what they were doing. They were herding pigs. Because remember, pig herding was, a lot of the herding they were doing was for the heathens that were living in, in that land. They used to worship things. They had pagan shrines. You know, they would eat the pork. They would, they would a lot of their sacrifices, they used pig's blood. So that was a big business in those days yeah. where they were. So those right. demons begged Christ to go into... The, the pigs that was used for idolatry was used for pagan sacrifices. So Christ, ca instead of casting those demons in the Tartarus, the bottomless pit, he cast them into these pigs. And we see the purpose of demonic activity. John 10.10, 10, it says to steal, kill, destroy. So what they did was they killed and destroyed all those pigs. But what they was trying to do to the man was the same thing. They was trying to kill and destroy this man. Hey, Shalom. Hey, much mercy to you brothers out there. That's really uh, understanding this new covenant. And that actually um, see what's actually going on. Much mercy to you brothers out there. And um, may you brothers continue to grow in the grace, man. Beautiful, man. The brothers, you know, we was breaking bread and breaking down the power over the serpent. So if you have power over the serpent, that is a, a mark of exemption. That is that is exempt from the judgment. And how do you know you have the mark of exemption is, is by your belief. So if you don't believe that you're in agreement with God, then you don't have power over serpents. It's just that simple. And um, I seen a video this morning, which um, they, I saw a video where they, these guys are pushing the name and the name and the name, but what they will not understand that it's not about anything carnal. Uh, the scriptures in Romans, it, it talks about a predestination. This is in Romans 8. So if you're predestined, to be of God, you're of God before anything carnal. Yeah, that means a name. That means uh, the the Hebrew or whatever they speaking. And and in the first century, the Lord he spoke Aramaic. He didn't speak Paleo Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew comes from Canaanite, 
language. These were the ancient Canaanites. They were using Canaanite deities. Our people were, were making offerings to Canaanite deities in the in uh, when you go back to Jeremiah. But anyway, um, so the Lord tells you, like we was going into in Revelations, that He give you the power to to bind up Satan. This is and this is the power that He gave the apostles in and the, the believers in Luke 10 and then they got this power in the first century going back in Pentecost they had that power also so so if the Lord has the power he gave it to you just like he gave Peter the keys to the, the he said Peter was a church and he gave Peter the keys so the keys coming when the Lord gives you the keys he gives you understanding and he gives you that power to bind up Satan and as us and the brothers was going into the power over Satan is to one of the powers is to unlock the code on all their false doctrine is to expose all their false doctrine in this time. Everything you see. And that's what the Lord has given us by us having that power in Revelations 20. We're walking in a day with the Lord. One day to the Lord is a thousand years. So never nobody ever walked alive a thousand years. So just like the brothers was explaining, we was going into we're walking with God right now. You see, we're walking a, a, a spiritual day with the Lord. Cause how? What do we do? Cause what we know the Lord. The Lord said, "If you you see me, you've seen the Father." So if you know what the Lord was saying and you understand the Lord, then you know the Father. And this is why the Lord tells you in um, in John fourteen that Him and the Father will come and make an abode with you. And so now nothing's impossible with the Lord. Now the Lord tells you that I think it's in Matthews. He said, Hey, nothing's impossible with God. So this, this is why these guys main thing in this time is to get you not to believe. And it's very heavy. And uh, I've, I've been seeing videos, uh, just the, in the, in the realms of guys are saying that they're not in the covenant and the Christians. Well, you supposed to be a Christian. You supposed to be in the covenant with the Lord. And this, this elder, these elderly men are constantly telling you that you're not with the Lord yet. You see? So this is satanic. Now, I want to go to this and then I want to go to uh, Acts 9 because guys are just kicking against uh, the, the pricks. That's what they're doing. They're kicking against um, God in this time. Now, John 14 and 23. The anointed answer. Hamashiach, he says, the anointed answered and said unto him, if a man love me and he keep my words and my father will love him and we will come and make our abode with him. And, and I'm going to read this in the NLT verse 23. It says, all who love me and will do what I say, my father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them so the lord lives in you if you love the lord and you're following his commandments this is why the lord said in the bright cloud in john 7 in matthew 17 that uh this is my beloved son um who i am well pleased hear ye him this is who you're supposed to listen to not the not elders not men holding to the old law not guys telling you to keep the old commandments you're supposed to listen to the lord the letters in red they're in red because you're supposed to listen to them first you're supposed to listen to these letters in red now this word abode in the kjv in matthew 14 23 i want to go into this word so we understand that the lord gave uh uh peter the keys and then we also understand that the Lord tells you in John 10 that he'll give you power over serpents. So now when you flip back and then when you go to uh, Revelations 20, now you understand having power over Satan to bind Satan. So this word abode in John 14 and 23 are abode, that word abode. Strong's G, 3438, Manet, Manet. Right, so there were a bold in John 14, 23. It says, uh, 
a stain. It says a stain. Abiding, dwelling. So the Lord is dwelling in certain men. So when guys say that they're not in a new covenant, they're telling you that the Lord ain't dwelling in them. And, and their elderly apostle already told you that they're not joined to the Lord. All right. So but at this time, if, if you are in these camps right now, you are in a dead state. You see, and you hate anything that got to do with Christians. Uh, it was a saying on the feed. It said uh, uh, popular Christianity is not biblical. But it tells you biblical Christianity is unpopular. So the real understanding of the real Christianity that Paul and the apostles was bringing in the first century, it, it is unpopular. You see what I'm saying? So we're not teaching church Christianity doctrine that's that's popular with the world. We're, we're teaching uh, Christianity that lines up with with the, with the Bible that's biblical. You see? So they got it mixed up. They think we're Christians. They, they, they call themselves calling us Christians like the Christians in the world. But we're the, we're the ones that really understand the Lord. So what we're teaching is not popular, but it's biblical. You see what I'm saying? And what you guys are teaching is not biblical. It's false doctrine. And it's not even you guys ain't teaching Christianity. You te you're teaching Satanism because that's what you're calling out when you call on these uh, Canaanite uh, gods of destruction. So it says the word of bow, it says to make and one's a bow. It says a metaphor of the of the of of the God and the Holy Spirit indwelling believers. So if the Lord is not indwelling in you, we can tell by your doctrine and what you're saying. So a lot of guys in this time, they're kicking against the pricks and they have no power. The Lord said that when the Holy Ghost come, you will have power. So men were receiving this power in the first century and they had power over Satan. And that's what this is in this time. You have power over Satan. He said, rejoice not that you have power over the spirit, but that your names are written in heaven. So by God saying they're not with God and they're not in the covenant, they don't have power over anything. You got a lot of dead guys teaching in these dead old covenant garments. So let's go to this. I want to go to this. I want to get into this uh, Acts 9 real quick. And this ain't going to be too long at all. <laughs> it's real. It's going to be real simple. So when you go back to Acts 9, Saul, he was in a he was in a demonic spirit before he was in before he was Paul. He was in a demonic spirit uh, persecuting the church. He was against God before the Lord knocked him off that horse. This is Acts 9 and 1. It says, And yet Paul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired him of letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So his whole thing was against men believing in the Lord. Just like you guys. You guys are in the spirit of Saul. These guys in these camps. These elders, your Shikaris, all these guys, they're they're in the spirit of these high priests in the synagogue that were against uh, the Lord. And just like Paul, he was against men believing in the Lord. And he fell to the earth. Uh, let's just go up. Verse 3, uh, Acts 9 and 3. And he, so he said, journey. And he came near Damascus and suddenly they were shining right about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. So, so the Lord knocked him off of that horse. And a light shined on him. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why prosecutest thou me? Saul, Saul, why prosecutest thou me? And that is what the Spirit is saying to these. Uh, this, this is what these guys are doing to the Spirit now. They're prosecuting the new covenant telling you it ain't there. So they're, they're getting you to unbelieve in it and believe their doctrine. Because that's all it is. It's like they don't want you to believe the new covenant is here, but you could believe their doctrine. And, and their Canaanite guys they're calling on. Because we don't serve the same power. You see, because if you're not with them, you're against them. This is what the Lord said. 
So clearly they say they're not joined to the Lord. So they're against the Lord. All right. So they're trying to fight for this world because they're demons. You see, they're demons. They, they want to hold on to their position in the world. It says, uh, and he says, art thou Lord? And the Lord said, I am the anointed whom thou prosecutest. Is it hard for thee to kick against the pricks? She says, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So this is in the KJV. So before Paul got blinded and knocked off that, that horse, he was prosecuting the church, uh, kicking against the pricks. So the Lord was saying, hey, I am the one that thou prosecuted. So this is Paul it says, and now he trembled. So like when you kick against the pricks, it's just like you're fighting against God. You're fighting a losing battle. It's kind of like you see them Jews over there, them false Jews, and they bang their head up against the wall and shit. This is what guys are doing. You ain't going nowhere. You're just banging your head up against the wall. You, It's, it's like. You, you're just running up into a, a brick wall. That's what you're doing. You're fighting against a brick wall and you ain't going nowhere. This is what guys, this, this is how this new covenant is. It ain't nothing you could do about the new covenant prevailing. It's just like when you go back to the movie with uh, Thanos. They couldn't, it was nothing they could do from stopping Thanos from gathering all those stones. So it's just like with this new covenant, it's inevitable. It's just a matter of time that this new covenant reaches who it's supposed to reach. And it's not looking for a lot of people. I tell you that. Acts nine and six, and he, and he trembling and astonished, saying, "Lord, what wilt thou have me to do?" And the Lord said unto him, "Arise and go unto the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do." So, guys, is fighting against the pricks. That word pricks, real quick. I want to go into this word pricks in the KJV. Strong's G2759. Kentron. Kentron. He says, the sting as of that of bees, scorpions, locusts, since animals will be their sting, even cause death. Paul attributes death personified as a sting or a deadly weapon. So what these scorp that's why the Lord called these guys snakes and scorpions, because they, they're trying to bite you, but they're but they're 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 fighting against the the new covenant with their sting you know with their bite with with death because if you fight against the new covenant what's the substitute without the new covenant death if you if you're teaching men not to believe in the new covenant then what's the alternative death does the scripture tell you that the strength of sin is death and sin is what the old law the old law didn't change your conscience Flesh and blood won't enter into the kingdom. The, the 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 old law is not something what you're going to use to get into the kingdom, bro. This is spiritual. So starting with you believing, and men are getting you to not believe, they are teaching you unbelief. And they're they're fighting against the pricks, and now they got you fighting against the pricks because you're teaching unbelief. So guys are fighting against God. And this is why the Lord said, Why are you prosecuting me? Heavy, bro. So this is what guys are doing. They're prosecuting a new covenant, kicking against the pricks. Pricks. It says, uh, "This is the point right here. This, this is this is the point." Hence, the proverb to kick against the gal, to offer vain or perilous or ruinous resistance, to offer vain, perilous, ruinous resistance. So. It is vain. The resistance you guys are giving is vain. You're just fighting against God. And this is what, um, well, who said that? Gamilio? He said, happily you find yourself to fight against God. And this is what guys are doing. They're really fighting against God in this last day because they're carnal. They have no spiritual understanding that nothing is impossible with God. You see what I'm saying? So they don't really understand that God and the angels really do fight our battles uh, these these apostles they may speak about the lord they may speak about angels but but with as far as them being in first person they only speak from a third person type of view they're they're speaking as is they're narrating they're not speaking as if they're with the lord this is what you got to understand 
Acts 5 and 38. And now I see, now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to not. You see, so if this new covenant is, is, is just of men, it'll come to not. But what do you see happening? But but if it be of God, you cannot overthrow. At least you be happily to even fight against God. Verse 39 in the NLT. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. If you may even find yourself fighting against God. And this is what the Lord was was explaining to Paul. He said, why is it? Why is you prosecuting me? You're going to find it's you're kicking against the pricks, meaning you're fighting against God. You're fighting a vain, hopeless battle. You all you guys that are in the flesh holding the old law, you're fighting a hopeless, vain battle, a uh, battle that's going to lead you guys to a eternal damnation. So repent to the new covenant. Um, come out of these groups at this point. If you're a part of these groups, you're you're of Satan because they're teaching nothing but death. Because if you, if you're against the new covenant, then what you're for? You're for death. And with that, a shallow wall.